Count on LEX 18 News. Two Scott County teachers and a police officer are hurt after a fight between students turns into a brawl. Controversy surrounds a fundraiser for a girls softball team that involves raffling off weapons. And a retired officer's mission to make a difference in the fight against school violence. LEX 18 News at 6 starts now. Good evening, I'm Nancy Cox. And I'm Kevin Christopher. Thanks for joining us at 6. Extra police responded to Scott County High School this morning after a fight among a few students turned into an all-out brawl. By the time it was all said and done, two teachers and a police officer had minor injuries. LEX 18's Lee Searcy has the big story at 6. <laughs> Around 8.40, this was the scene outside the cafeteria at Scott County High School. What began as a fight between a few girls quickly escalated. Teachers and a police officer tried to intervene, but even the officer was attacked when more students piled on the situation. But the level of violence in this video is completely uncalled for. Police say up to 10 female students were involved in the brawl. It ended about as quickly as it started. Students involved are going to be charged accordingly. We are not going to tolerate that kind of behavior. There were no weapons, this is not a gang issue. Police say the school was aware of friction building between the teens and had talked to parents and taken measures to try and avoid this. She don't want to go to school. Dakilla Jackson school. says her 16-year-old sister was attacked and targeted by a couple of the girls in what she calls an ongoing problem with them. Her sister wasn't physically hurt. But her not to want to go to school and she doesn't <laughs> cause any trouble. For her not to want to go to school or anything, we knew that something was wrong. We just could not figure it out. And then she goes back to school, and then this is what happened. Police say several of the teens will face assault charges. Jackson believes preventing violence starts at home. I feel like people should just really wake up and actually be more involved with their kids. Know what's going on with your kids. Covering the news in Scott County, Lee Searcy, LEX 18 News. The two teachers and the police officer received minor injuries, scratches, and abrasions. After the Florida school shooting, school safety and security are at the forefront of conversations all across the country. Here in Kentucky, state lawmakers have introduced several ways to protect students, such as arming some teachers. But school districts are figuring out things locally, and Fayette County is ready to make changes while dealing with fake threats. LAX 18's Carolina Buchak reports. Early this morning, as students began their day here at Frederick Douglass High School, word spread about a threat being made against the school. Now, the principal says after police looked into it, it turned out that threat was actually never made. It was just a rumor that was circulating around. But nonetheless, students and parents were nervous. And today at a meeting, the superintendent addressed ways how to make everyone feel more comfortable and safe at school. Thoughts and prayers are not enough. The time for action is now. For Fayette County Public Schools, that action means things like all middle schools now having handheld metal detectors. They'll also be looking into more detailed metal detectors for all schools, which the district has been considering for a while now. But the superintendent says there's a lot to look into. Think about you when you go to the airport. How long does it take to go through that screening? And some students say they're not sure if that would really help. I think I would feel safer, but I also know that there's just so many ways to sneak in weapons and ways to make weapons inside the school. In the meantime, some state lawmakers propose arming teachers as a way to keep school safe, but Fay County schools prefer to have more officers instead. For now, in our situation in Fayette County, I think law enforcement officers are, are the answer to, to make our schools safer. And of course, teachers and the school district encourage students to keep their eyes out open for any threats they may come across on social media and report them immediately. Covering the news in Lexington from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom, back to you. The district also created a safety advisory council and will have meetings coming up in the next few weeks. Wayne County schools have canceled classes for Monday and Tuesday so staff can undergo school security training. The on-site workshop is meant to better prepare staff in the event of a crisis. The active shooter training is in addition to the weather, emergency, and practice lockdown drills the schools regularly practice. Some backlash tonight over a raffle for an Anderson County girls softball team. Katherine Collins tells us some people say coaches should not raise money for kids 
by raffling off weapons. This flyer came across Joelle Finney's newsfeed one day after the school shooting in Florida. Pretty scary. It's a raffle for the Central Kentucky Bat Cats 10 and under softball team. Two people will win guns, an AR and a semi-automatic pistol. Finney had a strong reaction. And I was appalled and, and repulsed by the idea that an organization supporting young girls less than 10 years old to play softball was using as their means of making money. But the team's coach told me this isn't the first time the giveaway has happened and the raffle began before the most recent shooting. In a text, coach Kevin Beasley told me we are just trying to help these girls and their softball season. He says this is just one of many fundraisers for the travel team. The owner of the gun shop that will provide the guns told me over the phone the added attention to the raffle has only increased interest. It is not isolated, no, um, but it is a problem and we as a country are going to need to face it. Finney says she'd like to see the team raise money a different way, but even if the raffle were canceled, that won't fix what she sees as the country's bigger problem with guns. Covering the news, Katherine Collins, LEX 18 News. And the coach says whoever wins the guns will have to go through all the proper channels to get them. Kentucky State Police Commissioner Rick Sanders was one of 10 people who met with President Donald Trump at the White House today to discuss school safety. Sanders joined cabinet and local officials at today's roundtable, including the mayor of Parkland, Florida. At the meeting, President Trump said he supports giving cash bonuses to teachers who are trained to carry concealed weapons at school. Mr. Trump dismissed gun-free zones as an invitation for potential shooters and repeated his support for hardening school defenses, including arming teachers who have an aptitude and training for guns. The president also argued against holding active shooter training drills in school, claiming the exercise upsets children. Rain and a lot of it fell today for some of us. The corridor ran from Mercer County through Anderson County into Woodford, Western and Northern parts of Fayette County, Scott County, Harrison, Bourbon County, Nicholas County up into Fleming County, Mason County as well. From our Weatherbug Network, two and a half inches of rain fell at Bourbon County Middle School in Paris. That's along Stoner Creek. Frankfurt Capital City Airport was over two inches. Christ the King School over in the Chevy Chase area of Lexington. We saw just under two inches. Lesser amounts when you got to Danville. Inch and three tenths there at the Kentucky School for the Deaf. Rain is just about gone. We got to go out to Pike County to find one little shower on the Max Track Live Doppler, but we had plenty of it this morning. That was really heavy rain, and it came down hard for a couple of hours and led to a lot of flooding problems around Fayette County, Scott County, and some points to the northeast. Could see a stray shower this evening. Most of the evening ends up being dry, but we get into the hours before dawn. There's your next corridor of heavy rain taking shape, and that will be moving through the area just in time for the morning commute, so we may run into some problems again tomorrow morning, although southeast Kentucky, you're staying pretty dry again through all this. We have got a whole lot more water than that coming. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. All right, Bill. Well, this morning's rain led to a water rescue in Scott County. It happened on Lee's Town, Leesburg Pike, I should say, when someone drove into some water covering the road. Emergency crews were able to get the driver out of that thigh deep water. Leesburg Pike wasn't the only road affected by heavy rain. At one point, so many roads were closed, the county ran out of signs. Using other options, they've got a gentleman from our department who went out and was just using caution tape. Just anything to tell somebody, don't cross here. With more heavy rain expected in the coming days, Scott County firefighters and emergency management say they're hopeful drivers will remember the old adage, turn around, don't drown. One of Lexington's more well-known venues is also struggling with floodwaters. The Kentucky Horse Park is getting ready to host a big event this weekend, and getting there might be a challenge. LEX 18's Michael Burke explains. The Kentucky Horse Park looked and sounded more like a whitewater rafting venue today. Mother Nature, you know, sometimes can be harsh. This time, she made the park look like a boat launch. This would be the main entrance. It was closed all morning as it was impassable and large portions of the paddock area were more suited to swimming than grazing. If weather is approaching, if whether it be snow, rain or what, and we're always prepared to make sure that the horses are taken care of. It. Then there's this, taking care of visitors as the Home Builders Association of Lexington is busy setting up for the Central Kentucky Home Expo. That starts tomorrow. 
and we're supposed to get even more rain overnight heading into the morning hours. We'll just monitor the situation and we have different entrances we can we can route people through to make sure that they're, they're away from the water. So as that old saying goes, the expo must go on. We still go. Just don't go near any areas looking like this. This much rain, this fast, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Not unless you have a raft. Covering the news in Lexington, Michael Burke, LEX 18 News. The Home Expo, Expo begins tomorrow, and it frame forces another closure of that main entrance. Just follow the signs to alternate routes onto the grounds. A rare whooping crane injured after getting stuck in a fence in Knox County has died at the Louisville Zoo. The crane broke his wing and injured a leg when he got caught in the fence. He was taken to the Liberty Nature Center for help and underwent two surgeries at the Louisville Zoo. But the crane was unable to stand on his own, and veterinarians said recovery was very unlikely, so they made the decision to euthanize him. He'll be sent to experts in Madison, Wisconsin, for a necropsy. Kentucky could become the only state in the country without access to a poison control center. Governor Matt Bevin's two-year spending proposal eliminates state funding for the Kentucky Poison Control Center. Norton Healthcare officials say if the program is eliminated, callers would be greeted with an automatic recording urging them to either call 911 or go to the emergency room. A retired school resource officer hopes he can help in the movement to end school violence. His plan to help students as well as honor his friends and fallen officers is next on LEX 18 News at 6. A man on trial for manslaughter in a 2015 crash in Scott County that killed a Bourbon County teenager has been found not guilty. The news graphic reports Muhammad Abdullah received the verdict after more than four hours of jury deliberation in Scott County. The trial involved one and a half days of testimony about the 2015 crash on westbound I-64. According to an indictment, Abdullah was speeding when he hit a pickup near the Scott Fayette County line. It went off the road and overturned, killing 13-year-old Emily Sams. A retired school resource officer says he can't just sit by as school shootings continue across the country. He says he plans to reboot a program to let kids know they're not alone. Katherine Collins has this making a difference. First, there was the school shooting in Marshall County, and then last week, another in Florida. Uh, each one of those shootings and the one in Florida just, it, it hurts me, it bothers me. Joe Sanye is a retired school resource officer. He works as security at the Franklin County Courthouse now, but he says he has a greater calling to help students. We got to start listening to our young people, see what they're into. He's working to fix up this car and hopes to travel around to local schools to tell students that they're not alone. And he's paying tribute to his friends and fallen officers along the way. Sonia worked alongside Deputy Billy Wall and Captain Chuck Morgan in Jessamine County just before they were killed on duty. Wall was planning a fundraiser for Sonia's son's medical bills before his death. I didn't know it at the time until after his death that he was doing that, and I never got to thank him for it. And this is my way of paying back. He hopes he'll be a small part in ending violence in schools. Covering the news in Franklin County, Catherine Collins, LEX 18 News. More rain on the way. We'll find out when and where next in your LEX 18 Storm Tracker forecast. a whole lot of water. That's Kentucky Dam out in western Kentucky where again the flow coming through there is just tremendous. They've had even more rain than we've had and the problem they're going to run into they've got even more coming than we do as well. So you get a look there and it is just again a sea that they're forming in western Kentucky. For us it's the rain that fell last night and a lot of that came down in a hurry. We're talking two inches of rain over the course of about four to five hours in most places. This is from the Kentucky Mesonet, kymesonet.org. From Maysville in the north at two and a half inches of rain in the Ohio River. We're going to have a lot of problems on the Ohio over the coming days and probably weeks the way things are shaping up. Cynthiana had two inches of rain. Carlisle was just under two. Frankfurt was over two, as was Harrodsburg. But look at how quickly you go from all of that to basically nothing.
I mean, McKee had four hundredths of an inch of rain. Liberty was a quarter inch, but Lebanon was almost an inch and a half. Around Fayette County, these are automated rain gauges. We put the, uh, the creek systems on here so you get an idea where the flooding was. Off of South Elkhorn Creek, Fort Spring, and Yarlton, 2.4, 2.6 inches. That actually fed off of Town Branch as well. 2.3 inches downtown Lexington. Now you run Cane Run Creek, uh, Citation Boulevard to the north, so that's what ran up into Scott County. We saw 2.5 inches of rain there at Citation Boulevard. North Elkhorn Creek, not as much rain fell. Bryan Station, Winchester, both were under 2 inches. Hickman Creek going through the southern part of Fayette County Veterans Park. About an inch and three quarters. You get up into the Licking River system. On the south fork of the Licking, Cynthia is 2.3. Stoner Creek, Paris, 2.5. Mount Olivet and Carlisle on the main branch of the Licking, you see between 2.2 and 2.6 inches of water. And again, it fell quickly. Flood watch continues. You run it all the way from the Ohio River there in Maysville to the south along Highway 68 and north, which again, where you saw the rainfall last night was pretty doggone close to that. Max Rack Live Doppler now, we're more or less quiet, but we'll be tracking several more rounds of rain. Some of that will be heavy. We're running out of places to put the water, but all of this will begin to end Sunday. So today's additions to February's fun facts. Two and a half inches of rain, that's a record amount at the Bluegrass Airport, gives us 8.13 for the month of February. That's now tied for the third wettest February. We only need two more inches for the record. We could have that by Sunday. The other records that have occurred this month, the warmest winter high and low, warmest February high, warmest February low. We did that one twice, two different days. The most 70 degree days in February, and we've tied for the consecutive number of February days in the 70s at three. So you're looking at the next surge of rain. Brand new computer modeling, and we're talking how at 5 and 5.30, we thought that corridor might be shifted a little bit more to the north, and lo and behold, the computer modeling catching up to what we were thinking, and you look to the bigger picture going on into Sunday. Heaviest rain will be right along the Ohio River, but all of us are in for a whole lot of water again. Southeast Kentucky, not quite so much. Waves of low pressure will continue moving along a front that moves north tomorrow. We get on the warm side of it. Spring comes back for a couple of days. Next surge comes in Friday night and Saturday after that. These ones look to be heavier than the ones we've had coming through, especially the one late Saturday. That one could be possessing some strong thunderstorms. And temperatures, they will continue to warm as we go through the night tonight. The front still in southern Kentucky, but it is northbound. As we talk about our forecast for tonight, you saw the 50 degree temperature in Lexington now. That's pretty much our low. Temperatures rising toward morning. Some of that rain may be heavy late tonight as well. More rain both early and late. Temperatures tomorrow in the low 70s. Heavy rain thunderstorm potential on Saturday. Some of those could be strong. The rain ends on Sunday. Nothing falling out of the sky Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Any chance that ends early Sunday? That's the hope at this point. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. UK won its fifth NCAA basketball championship back in 1978. Hear from the players on that team as they got together to celebrate 40 years since their title win. That's next in LEX 18 Sports. 40 years ago, the University of Kentucky won its fifth NCAA basketball championship and first without Coach Adolph Rupp. Starting today, players and coaches are having a reunion to celebrate the accomplishment. The team knocked off Duke 94-88 back in March of 1978 thanks to 41 points from Jack Givens. Joby Hall led the Wildcats, who also included Kyle Macy, Rick Roby, James Lee, and Mike Phillips. They'll be honored at Saturday's UK game against Missouri. We were ranked number one virtually every week of the season. We might have fallen to number two once, but, um, and, and along with that uh, comes a lot of pressure. Now, I give the coaching staff a lot of credit for uh, deflecting that and absorbing it all and kind of keeping us shielded from it, but uh, there was a huge sigh of relief for me when we walked off the floor after winning it all. We were so versatile, we could play so many different ways. Defensively, we were probably underrated. We were a pretty good defensive team. Offensively, we really didn't have a weakness, whether it was Truman, Jay coming in off the bench, outside, Tim Stevens subbing in. A lot of guys could shoot it from outside. Coach Hall's been a little under the weather, wasn't there today. The UK basketball team currently will host Missouri Saturday at 8:15, looking for a third straight win. The Wildcats coming off Tuesday night's 15-point win at Arkansas, where they started the game trailing 11 zip before roaring back in the second half behind five players in double figures. I'm slowly starting to figure out this team, and I'm happy with where the direction we're going, but this league is a bear. I mean, Arkansas is an NCAA tournament team, and probably, I'm going to guess, a top six or seven seed. 
The UK women are on the road tonight at Ole Miss. Tips off at 8.30. You can watch it on the SEC Network. It's the next to last game of the season before the Wildcats play in the SEC tournament. UK 5-9 and nine in the league. Ole Miss 1-13. and 13. Defensively, um, you know, the way that they um, play and construct their offense has been challenging for us. So, so they, they're an, another year where they're doing that really, really well. The UK football team announced today that it will hold its pro day on Friday, March 23rd. Gives the UK players a chance to work out in front of the scouts to try and impress for draft day or even future draft days. And the SEC Network will also televise all 14 SEC schools pro days so you'll be able to watch the UK players work out. LEX 18 News will be right back. Most of the evening is dry. That's good news. The bad news is rain comes back tomorrow morning. And some of that may be heavy early. Hmm. Right around 50 to start, but in the 70s to finish, often on rain. Drive safely in the rain, please. Thank you for watching. NBC Nightly News is next.